So there's a sunnah of Ibrahim salam that I started to implement. And I began to notice that actually a lot of my du'as were being answered right away. You know, like for example, there was a time I was at the masjid. And you see something small. You know, there was a, they brought pizza for the youth program. But there was no water. And I was like, man, we looked around, couldn't find any water. So I just raised my hands and I said this out loud. And I said, oh Allah, I'm kind of thirsty. Could you please give me some water? And not even 15 seconds later, the imam of the masjid walks into the masjid. He sees me. He sees there's no water. He says, Ahsan, come here. I unlocked the kitchen. Come get water for everyone. And the young guys were around me like, what? What just happened? I was like, I know, right? That's crazy. And I didn't connect the dots right away, but like, I think this is the, the actual reason. And it's not like a trick. It's not a gimmick. You know, it's really just like relationship advice. When we look at Ibrahim salam's relationship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we see like it was really special, right? I mean, there's a reason he's called Khalilullah. He's the best friend of Allah. That he wouldn't even attribute the most basic things to himself. Like a lot of times, you know, when you say, hey, what did you have for dinner last night? He's like, I ate chicken. Ibrahim salam wouldn't even go to that extent saying, I ate chicken. He would say, Allah fed me chicken, you know, Allah clothed me with this, Allah gave me drink with this, you know, and the only time he ever says like me, like I did this, is when it's something negative. So for example, in the Quran, Allah says, or Ibrahim alayhi salam says, وَإِذَا مَرِدْتُوا فَهُوَ يَشْفِينَ When I become sick, he gives me cure. Because negative things are not attributed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he, the, the act of falling sick is on me, but the act of giving cure, Allah cured me. Right? And so this was a sunnah that I really loved. And I, you can see it everywhere in his life, by the way. You know, when you see it when he's about to be thrown into the fire, and he's strapped to the catapult. And Jibreel alayhi salam, he comes to him and he says to him, Oh Ibrahim, should I save you from this fire? He said, if it's from you, I don't want it. If it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then okay, go ahead and put the fire up. All I need is Allah. Like he had this very direct relationship with Allah. And I realized like a lot of times the way I would approach dua was very transactional. Like I call upon Allah when I need Him. If I don't need Him, then you know I'm not calling upon Allah that much. And I realized how wrong this was because I actually had a friend like this in college. Who, every time he called me, he wanted a favor. It's just like, dude, come on, man. Like, I don't mind giving you a favor, but just call me randomly once. You know, just, just call me and ask me how I'm doing. And that's it. You know, just call me out of any genuine interest that you have for me as a human being, and not me as a set of favors, right? And I'll happily give you all the favors that you're looking for. And I realize, like, that's... That's kind of what a lot of times I was doing with Allah. I'm just only asking Allah for favors. I'm not really trying to build a genuine and real relationship with Him. Moreover, a lot of times, the things that I want in life, Allah is not my first point of contact for those. Like Ibrahim alayhi salam, it was the first point of contact. It's like, okay, Allah is going to help me or nobody's going to help me. For me, it was the complete opposite. It's like, okay, I'm hungry. Let me go to my mom. Let me go to my wife. Okay, let, maybe they'll make me something, right? I'm sick, okay, let me go to the doctor, let's see if he has some medicine for me, you know, or like, I'm sad, let me go talk to my friends, let me vent to so-and-so, and I was like, dude, it's like an afterthought, like after the fact, I'm like, oh, I could have asked Allah for that food, I could have asked Allah for that medicine, I could have asked Allah for that comfort, but like, I'm, I'm seeking Allah in a very indirect way, you know, I'm seeking Allah through these other worldly means, which are effective, which is, I mean, this is obviously why we, we rely on them. But Ibrahim a.s. did not rely on those things. Ibrahim a.s. relied on Allah. Ibrahim a.s. said, Allah fed me. So when, that's what I started to do, you know. I was like, okay, I want to talk to someone. I want to vent. I had a hard day. Okay, first let me talk to Allah. I want food. Let me first ask Allah. I want water. Let me first ask Allah. When I started to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first, when I started to reach out to Allah, even sometimes randomly when I don't want anything. But just as I go outside, I look at the stars. Oh Allah, what a beautiful place that you've made. What a beautiful like you know, scenery that you've put in front of me. How perfect are you? 
I'm not asking for anything. Just talking to Allah as though He's my friend. You know, like I have something in my heart, let me go express it to Allah. That one shift changed like the whole dynamic, right? Number one, because like Allah is actually the only person you can talk to like that. Every other person that you want to talk to, no matter how close they are, like if it's your kid, your wife, your, your mother, there's always a level of decorum. Like there's some things that you have to filter out, you know, things that are in your heart or things that are in your mind that you just can't say with your tongue. Otherwise, it's going to cause problems. Right? You have to filter certain things. But with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there's no filter because He already knows what's in our heart. He already knows what's in our mind, right? So that was number one, right? And, and then the second thing is that when I actively started to try to like build that relationship with Allah, then those du'as became like a very natural thing. It was like, oh Allah, I'm thirsty. Could I, could I have some water? And I know somewhere, some, somehow water's going to find its way to me, you know? Because like that relationship has been built. And so the lesson here is that whoever has Allah has everything, right? And whoever doesn't have Allah doesn't have anything. So our goal should not be to ask Allah for things. Our goal should be to obtain Allah in our hearts. And when we have Allah, then we have everything.